This is a video review of WebDiver Galleon, and this figure is really cool. Now, if you look on it, it has lots of nice, lovely detailing here. Like, here is like the captain's quarters or crew's quarters, and it looks like it's a huge ship. Like, people that would be in there would be like just itty bitty, so it's got some nice detailing that really gives it a sense of scale. It is obviously just dragon butt back here, so it's not perfect. And on the top, it's obviously robot junk up here, but it's not quite as bad as the back. On the top, you can kind of pretend that it might be something on a ship, but you'll have to use your imagination to do it. Um, now, as you can see, it has these tiny feet here, and they allow him to balance when he's in ship mode, because otherwise he would just be sitting on this and he'd be falling over all the time. It would not make for a good toy. Now, the thing is, these are glued out on mine, and the reason why is because, um, well, here, here's a story that you guys can probably take a lesson from. When you buy something online, and it comes in like a toy like this, and if it's below freezing out, let the toy get back up to room temperature before you start fiddling with it. What happened was, because the toy was so cold, when I moved one of these down, I think it was this one, uh, the plastic of the ratchet mechanism broke and just fell out. And if I'd wait until it was warm enough, maybe that wouldn't have happened, but... Either way, let your figures warm up before you start messing with them if you order them when it's really cold out. Just a little bit of friendly advice, you don't do what I've done. Now, anyway, I, I, I just love this ship mode because it's really great. Like the dragon going through the ship I think is great. The Jolly Roger on the front is great. The um, a sail being a flexible plastic is great. It just looks great. I, I love how these individual cannons are posable and there are tons of these all over it. Otherwise, the only other thing that you can really do with this mode is you have these buttons on the side that will fire torpedoes. And depending on how uh, hard you press the buttons, they will fire decently far. Um, but do take care, they are missiles, you don't want to lose them. Now, moving on to transformation. This guy's transformation is pretty simplistic, and unfortunately he's a bit of a parts former in a way that there's no way around it. Basically, the entire bottom half of it just pops off, and then the figure is just the top half, which kind of sucks. Now, there, there's a little bit more parts forming involved because this right here is a sword. But considering that he looks fine without it, I'm not as peeved about this as I am about what I'm about to show you. Which is you need to pop this up and then you just pop it off here. Now one thing I do want to mention here is that the ratchets and the legs here are not even. They're offset from each other a little bit, which makes it kind of hard to get this back on. Um, the best I've been able to do is just press down on it until the ratchets find a place where they're not going to pop out of the of um, whatever position they are into the actual ratchet position. That's the best I've been able to do because it is really hard getting these as aligned as I have them right now. Anyway, continuing on, you want to pull the, uh, separate this section from here and that will come up like this and become a shoulder pad. Do the same over here. You will separate this Straighten out the head, which will turn around. Then you're going to pull the tail off the mast. The mast will just kind of fold down for now. You'll bring the legs down, fold out the feet, And these feet are nice and posable. They got good ball joints. They can even split their toes a little bit. Although I don't tend to do that um, just because uh, it, it, he balances better when the feet are flat on the instep. Anyway, moving on, you'll spread his arms out to the side like this. Bring them out like this. Rotate his upper body around and hope that it doesn't get, the arm doesn't catch on the mast. Then what you do is you will take the mast, rotate around like this, bring it down into the tail and then plug it into his body like this, and it'll give him a, a badass cape. Then you'll take his tail, you'll bend it up into his back like this, squeeze it all together, and then, um, now he's mostly done, we will need to pose him up a little bit. Turn his arms forward, turn his hands to the side, open up his claws, and all, all three of the fingers on his hands are posable. Although that actually ends up being a detriment to the figure, as you will soon see. Get his head looking straight, and this guy looks badass. He just looks awesome. Now, you do have this left over, and this turns into a shield, but it's too big for him to hold, uh, or for the, um, 
for his hands to hold without just flopping down, which is a bit of a shame. And you also get this sword here, but the thing is, his sword does not go any more forward than this, so he's just as likely to stab himself in the eye with this, which, by the way, he does have an eye patch, and this seems to be the explanation for why how he lost his eye, so that's a bit of a shame. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If you put it into his hand like this, the blade is just right next to his eye all the time, and it's just not the most intimidating weapon because it's going to damage him more than anyone else. If, say, the uh, tang of the weapon right here, if it allowed it to go forward more like this, it wouldn't be quite so bad. And you could probably do that if you start shaving away from this area here uh, so that it can rotate further. But as it stands, there's a little notch right there that's supposed to go into this segment here to lock it into place. So not a fan of the weapon as it is, but it could be a good weapon if you modified it. It's also very flimsy rubber. Um, if you try and put the shield into his hand, uh, it's it's just kind of a mess. Yeah, go in, go in. I've squeezed his fingers together as hard as I can, and it, it does work. It just it detracts from the detail of the robot. If you try and move it around, it carries its arm with him all over the place, and it's just big and unwieldy, and he will let go of it so easily because the joints and the fingers are not tight enough for it, so this is more of a hassle than anything else. The best way i found to use it actually is just like a surfboard. That's the only way he can use it that doesn't just suck. But even this is not that great, because he's probably going to fall off of it, but it's something you can do with it. So this, definitely a detriment. The sword not so much just because if you lose it, it's okay for the vehicle mode, but I would prefer the sword were better. Now onto the figure itself, now that we've covered the accessories, the head is very nice. It uh, can look way down, look way up. It can look uh, left and right, very poseable, very nice. The arms go forward and back, although the cape will get in the way. They go in and out, to rotate above the elbow, rotate at the elbow 90 degrees, the wrist will swivel, and all of his fingers are individually articulated, which is nice, but does not help for his accessories at all. He would have a waist, um, a waist swivel if his cape were not pegged into his back, but with a cape pegged into his back, he does not have a waist swivel. You can move his tail around if you want a little bit, but I usually leave it up against his back like this just because it makes him more clean. And then his legs here, they go forward, they go back, and they go in and out, rotate above the knee, although that joint is very loose. He has a double jointed um, ratchet at the knee. And then his feet can bend forward and back, side to side a little bit, they can rotate around, and then you can also split the toes if you want, and the toes can bend down and even up just a little bit. So he's got very nice feet, and I mentioned this earlier a little bit, but his, um, the ratchets in his hips are not even. So you can kind of see this, uh, they're basically at the same position, but this leg is behind this leg a little bit. That kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world because his feet are uh, poseable enough to make up for any difference in how they're aligned. So it does not affect his ability. It's not like my Gradion, who has basically the same problem, whereas Gradion is the uh, main figure of the Web Diver line. And for him, because he does not have poseable feet, it makes him unplayable because he can only stand straight up and down. So this guy does have a problem with the ratchets in his legs, but it's not insurmountable. Um, overall, I love his aesthetic. I love the way he. Um, I love the way he looks. I'm. I'm a fan of most of how he transforms, except for the extra bits. I wish they found a different way to do that. And overall, he's just a very, very cool figure. Now, he does combine with Gradion. I'm not going to do that, um, because Gradion's packed away, and the combinations with Gradion almost always look bad. The thing is, with Gradion, that figure doubled as a... He doubled as a video game. You would plug him into your uh, TV with AV cables, and you could... You'd have a controller on the back, on his back, and... From what I've heard, the game is bad, I've not played it, but the interesting thing is that all the figures in Web Diver had a gimmick where they would have a mode where they could attach onto his chest and then a little IR receiver would communicate to Web Di to Gradion that a certain figure had attached to his chest. And so the combinations with, Web with uh, Gradion are not meant to be good looking combinations, they're meant to communicate to the game that, hey, you've got a new accessory on you, it's time to power up so you can beat the bad guy, basically. So. 
I'm not too invested in the combinations, just the individual web diver figures. And some of them, like this guy, are really cool. Some of them, like the, um, there's one that's actually a watch or a clock. He's not so great, but overall, I've been very pleased with the web diver line so far. Um, some more than others, but anyway, yeah, this has been a video review of, um, Web Diver Galleon. I like him. I recommend him. Although he is not perfect. He's far from perfect. He's just cool enough to make up for this one big flaw. Anyway, uh, I review Power Rangers, Transformers, and Cross figures, Digimon, Web Diver figures, and lots more stuff. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe. If you look in our, uh, in the video description down below, we have some playlists and a Facebook link. Check that out if you feel so inclined. And thank you for watching.